Thank you, Johnny. Hi, folks, and welcome. This is Jeopardy! This is Jeopardy! Please welcome our contestants. Player ah. one. <laughs> yeah. Player two. <laughs> Player three. And now, here is the host of Jeopardy, Alex Trebek. Thank you, Johnny Gilbert. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. Here comes the Jeopardy round. The first round of play today has these categories for you. I hop. Food words and phrases. How about them tigers? Steve Martin movies. Literary geography. And Washington, Lincoln, or Obama? Player one, you're in command of the board. The red type of this marsupial can leap over barriers as high as six feet. Player one, use the Wii remote or press the corresponding direction on the plus control. You are correct. <laughs> Please pick again, player one. This class of animals includes frogs and toads. Let's hear it, player one. Ooh. Right. <laughs> Select again. The hare named for this country between France and the Netherlands is actually a rabbit. Okay, player one. Right. <laughs> Choose again, player one. A grasshopper shares the billing with one of these insects in the title of an Aesop fable. Yes, player one. Yes. <laughs> player one. This tiny insect pest, Pulex irritans, can leap more than 130 times its own height. Player one? Correct. You get to pick again, player one. Breakfast dish that can also mean to flatten. Okay, player two. Yeah, good. You again, player two. In 1966, the U.S. government banned M-80s and these round red firecrackers. Let's hear it, player one. Ah. That is correct. <laughs> player one, used before barrel, it suggests the homespun style and philosophy of rural folk. Yes, player one. Yes. Player one. It's the spicy two-word name for a type of knot that lets you join a rope to a rail or a post. It's player two. <laughs> you got it. We return to you, player Let's two. Let's get Kelly's assistance on this clue. A nursery rhyme says, This person, this person, mend my shoe. Get it done by half past two. Player one? That's correct. Select again. This tiger is the great spokes cat for Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. It's player three. Right. <laughs> Please pick again, player three. All right, here with the clue is Kelly. The South China tiger has these features spaced farther apart than other species do. On each individual tiger, they're unique, like fingerprints. Okay, player one. <laughs> yep. Player one, back to you. 
answer. <laughs> it's the Daily Double. And you have the lead. What are you going to wait for? Answer this. Tiger is the second rank in this organization for young boys. That puts you even further ahead. We return to you, player one. Tigers are the largest cats, and the tiger named for this Russian region is the largest tiger. Yes, player three. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> player three, pick again. The largest population of wild tigers is found in this Asian country on about 30 wildlife reserves. Let's hear it, player two. That's right, way to go. You again, player two. Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Chevy Chase were these title characters of a 1986 comedy. Okay, player one. That's it. Player one, back. In planes, trains, and automobiles, Steve Martin told him, those aren't pillows. It's player two. <laughs> That's correct. Choose again, player two. This 1987 comedy in which Steve played Fire Chief C.D. Bales was based on Cyrano de Bergerac. Player two. <laughs> right you are. Yeah! Player two, you pick again. Steve Martin and Bonnie Hunt are the parents of an extremely large brood in this 2003 remake. Let's hear it, player one. <laughs> Good. You get to pick again, player one. Queen Latifah wreaks havoc on the life of straight-laced lawyer Steve Martin in this 2003 comedy. Yes, player three. Yes. You again, player three. In chapter eight of this novel, Atlanta is very exhilarating, and temporarily, even better than Tara. Let's hear it, player two. Good. <laughs> player two, back to you. In the preface to the Moonstone, Vishnu commands three Brahmins in this country to guard the title gem night and day. Yes, player three. Uh, hey, you're right. <laughs> Select again. In Pride and Prejudice, Mrs. Bennett says, the country is a vast deal pleasanter than this city. Okay, player three. Good for yeah! you. We return to you, player three. In Chapter 5 of The Sun Also Rises, horse chestnut trees are in bloom in this city's Luxembourg Gardens. Player 2. <laughs> yep. Please pick again, Player it's 2. It's the first river mentioned in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. It's Player 1. That is correct. Player one, you pick again, please. Was born a British subject. Player two. Very good. You get to pick again. The tallest. Okay, player three. Good. Player three, back to you. Never lived in Illinois. 
It's player three. Yes. <laughs> player three, pick again. Went to Occidental College and Columbia University. Yes, player two. Correct. And here's the thousand dollar clue. Received a patent. Let's hear it, player two. That is correct. Player three is in third place. Means, of course, player three will select first in double jeopardy. Player three, you're in last place. What'll it be? The categories for the double jeopardy round are insects, drink it, dance it, or drive it, art and artists, movie folk, old, odd, and obscure words, and Asian history. Player three, you go first in this double jeopardy round. The finest singers among species of this insect are the tree type, not the house or field type. It's player one. Ooh. Right. <laughs> Choose again, player one. It reached Texas from Mexico around 1890 and spread into most cotton growing areas of the United States. Yes, player two. Hey, you're right. Player two, back to you. Like 1990, 2007 was a year when these noisy insects famously swarmed the Midwest. Let's hear it, player two. You got it. Choose again, player two. Stoneflies belong to the order Plecoptera which means pleated this. Okay, player one. Yeah! Right. You get to pick again, player one. Two common shorthorn species of this in North America are the lubber and eastern lubber. Player two. That's it. You again, player two. Cabriolet. Okay, player three. <laughs> Good for you. We return to you, player three. Hambo. Yes, player two. That's right. Way to go. Select again. Answer. The first of the two daily doubles. You're in second place, so what is your wager going to be? Please enter your wager. And the clue. Kirsch. Yes. Player two. Pick again. Trabant. It's player three. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> player three. Wapala. Player one. Right you are. Player one, you pick again, please. This telegraph inventor's notable portraits included those of the Marquis de Lafayette and William Cullen Bryant. Let's hear it, player one. That's correct. Please pick again, player one. Picasso painted this work as a protest against the bombing of a town in the Spanish Civil War. Okay, player three. 
You are correct. Layer 3, pick again. In her 1949 painting, Diego and I, Diego Rivera is depicted on her forehead. Player three. Good. <laughs> we return to you, player three. Here's Kelly. She'll show you. This American's illustration of the whitewashing scene from Tom Sawyer was featured on a 1972 stamp. Let's hear it, player one. Yeah! <laughs> Player one, you pick again. One of his last paintings before his 1903 death in the South Pacific was a landscape of Brittany in winter. Yes, player one. That's correct. Please pick again, player one. Rejected by USC Film School, this S in DreamWorks SKG now sits on the film school's board of counselors. It's player one. <laughs> right. Select again. Jerry Maguire was originally written for Tom, not Cruz, but him. Let's hear it, player two. Hey, you're right. <laughs> Player two, back to you. He majored in journalism at Fordham before playing a newspaper reporter in the Pelican Brief. Okay, Player two. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Choose again, Player two. This actor got his name by giving his mom a fetal kick while she viewed a Da Vinci work. Player one? <laughs> Correct. You again, player one. To get orc war screams for The Lord of the Rings, this director put phonetic yells on a scoreboard for 25,000 cricket fans. Yes, player three. That is correct. Player three, back to you. There's no beating around this archaic term for a wine shop or tavern. It's player one. That is correct. <laughs> You get to pick again, player one. It really burns me up that febrific means having one of these. Let's hear it, player one. Yeah! Right you are. Please pick again, player one. Lacrimiform literally means shaped like this. It's player one. That's correct. You get to pick again, player one. A thurible is an ornamental container in which this is burned during a religious ceremony. Player one? That's it. Player one, back to you. Winton Marsalis should know that to bisonate means to blow this horn, his specialty. Yes, player three. Right. Player three, back to you for our next selection. In the 1920s, the Kemalists opposed the Sultan in this country and eventually prevailed. Okay, player two. Yep. <laughs> you again, player two. In December of 1946, he attacked the French at Tonkin, 
beginning a war that ended eight years later. Player one. You got it. We return to you, player one. Answer. The second daily double. And you're in the lead now. How much? And the daily double clue. In 1739, the peacock throne built for Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan was stolen by these people. You have maintained your lead. Way to go. Choose again, player one. In 1782, when Chao Praya Chakri became King Rama I, he moved his capital across the river to this city. It's player two. <laughs> That's right. Way to go. And now the $2,000 clue. And here's Kelly. These nomadic horsemen, who overran most of Asia in the Middle Ages, lived in portable lattice tents known as yurts. Okay, player three. That's correct. You all move on to Final Jeopardy, which will continue after these messages. Final Jeopardy still to come, and here's the category. 19th century authors. So, what's your wager? Each direction on the plus control pad represents a different response. Press a direction to select an answer. Here's your final Jeopardy clue. In 1833, a French historian said that this author had built a cathedral as solid as the foundations of the other one. Did you come up with the correct response? And this <laughs> correct response will add how much to your score? What did you put as your response? How much Ooh. do you add to your total with that correct response? Let's see your response. And that <laughs> correct response will add... You've come out ahead as our champion, player one. So long.